hopefully you can. Um, so we have on the webinar with us, so, so the reason why we're here today is we want to make sure everyone can have the most beautiful branded website possible. Um, and you also have got a lot of control and we want to empower you so that you can be able to do your own changes, make stuff happen really, really quickly, and just have full control of your own branding, your own website um, that we've built for you. So we're also, I'm sure a lot of you, the reason you came on today, are giving away three free hours. Um, so we're gonna share with you at the end um, the link so you can um, make sure you take advantage of that and the team can do a lot of this work for you. But we really, really do wanna empower you guys to be able to do as much yourself. Um, and we're gonna walk through step by step how to do everything. Um, make sure if you've got questions, you use the Q&A and not the chat. Um, if you wanna chat amongst yourselves, that's fine. That's what the chat's for. But if you've got a specific question you want an answer, use the Q&A, but I will recommend that you hold off for a little bit. Um, now that I'm looking at myself, that hat is distracting, so I'm gonna take my hat off. There we go. Um, so make sure, yeah, you use the Q&A. We've got our branded site team on the call. Um, they're gonna help answer the questions, because we will be going pretty quickly, but try and, you know, I, I would say hold off a little bit and, and See what we're teaching, because we may be answering a lot of your questions as we're going through this, and then as questions pop up, you can ask. But on the call today, we have um, Ashley. Uh, Ashley is our VP of Operations, um, been with us, whoa, three years or so now, I'd say. Um, she, she is um, in, out of New Mexico, um, working from home, just like all of us right now. Ashley, if you want to, just say hi really quick. Let's see your real face. So <laughs> you're a real person. There she is. <laughs> hey, everyone. Good to see you all on the call today. Yep. So Ashley runs the whole branded site team. And then um, we also have on the call Kelly. Kelly um, has been with us about two years. She handles a lot of our VIP clients. She's here in the US. Um, very, very knowledgeable of all things branded site. Um, Kelly, do you want to say hi? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, good to virtually see you, and I'm excited to see what you guys can do today. Cool. Yep. And then we've got Jun. Jun is in Philippines um, with Paula. Um, Jun is going to be um, teaching two of the sessions today. Um, he's what we call a Squarespace ninja. So anything technical on the Squarespace side, um, sort of Jun and Paula are, are really, really good with that stuff. So maybe Jun, do you just want to say hi real quick? Yeah, hi guys. Um, good to finally see, not see me. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> they can <hi>. see you. <laughs> so June's going to be jumping on in a second. And Paula, just want to say hi really quick. Hi everyone. This is Paula. <laughs> good to see you here. <laughs> perfect, perfect. All right. So just so you know that they're real people, but they're going to be managing the Q&A and behind the scenes. And June and myself are going to be back and forth. And of course, we've got Dr. Barry Jenkins, or Professor Barry Jenkins on the call. What's up, mate? Uh, mate, I've got my kids with me here, mate. So, uh, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting for me. See? Uh, no worries. You're the master. Breaking corona. You're the master of juggling <laughs> stuff. So, Barry's going to be, um, you know, sort of keeping an eye on things. If things get a little too technical, there's... Um, might be going over people's heads. He's going to sort of button and uh, tell us to button it down and explain it in plain English. So that being said, let me go straight into today's agenda. So the four things we want to try and get through to you guys today are, um, first of all, custom squeeze pages, how to create those. Um, I'm going to be teaching that. Um, let me just give you a quick example of what a custom squeeze page looks like. So it's gonna look something along these lines. Um, let's say, for example, you're an agent or a team in Palm Springs, like a client of ours here, Brandy Sandoval. Um, I'm gonna create this exact page, and it's gonna be mid-century modern Palm Springs homes with pools from $1 million to $2 million. It's gonna have a button on it where they can contact you to be able to do a virtual tour. It's gonna have a video, walk you through, um, an overview of what Palm Springs sort of, you know, pool homes are about. And then it's got all the actual homes themselves 
wood pools from $1 million to $2 million in Palm Springs um, in a mid-century modern style, right? These are all sucked in in real time. They update in real time, um, and they all link through to your search site. So we're going to show you exactly how to create this page and many, many pages just like it, okay? The second piece, Jun's going to take over. He's going to show you how to add the actual um, button that creates the form so people can contact you. You can actually um, generate leads from these landing pages and have them tagged appropriately so they go to the right people. So he's going to walk through forms for Squarespace and particularly how to add a form to a squeeze page like this. Then we're going to go into single property pages. I'm going to show you guys just because I'm in love with um, mid-century modern real estate uh, properties, especially in Palm Springs. I'm going to show you how to create a, a landing page just like this um, with virtual tour built into it, an agent assigned to it, and you know some other little sort of additions you can add to these pages. There's two ways to do this. So I'm going to show you both ways. Okay, and then finally, the last thing we're going to do is show you guys how to create single agent pages. And June's gonna jump back on and sort of show you guys um, how to create really cool single agent pages, a little bit like Judy Weiniger's done here. So she's really added in her own flavor, her own style. So there's a lot of personality to a single agent page. It's not just listings and a short description. Is um, you know, you really get a feel for, wow, this is a person who's on top of it, got really great branding, um, and someone I want to work with. So I want to sh show you guys how you can do the same thing for yourselves. Okay, take a breath, Kiwi. That was a lot. Okay, so let me, um, and look, anytime, um, you know, our brand insight team, any really great questions come up that you think we sh I should address as I'm going through each segment, feel free just to jump in and interrupt me and I'll answer them in real time. Um, but they will sort of be typing away and sort of answering as much as they can um, in the meantime. So to create a landing page like this, let me show you exactly what you need to do. So you're going to go into the back end of your website. You're going to log into your site. You're going to go under pages. And I suggest you create it under the not linked section down the bottom here. Um, this is where I created this one. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one now and recreate it for you from scratch. Why not link? Say what? Why do you recommend putting it in the not link section? Oh, um, because you're still building the page out. You're sort of playing around with it until you get it really pretty until the way you really want it. Um, I don't suggest you put it on your site. This is kind of what I call like the sandbox. We can play around with stuff and it's not going to be linked on the site, but you can still create a link to it and you can share a link with people. But once you're happy with it and you really want to promote like this particular landing page, you can drag it from here and you can put it up into your main navigation. So you may want to have a section up here for, um, you know, special, special squeeze pages or, um, but, but generally, you know, these sort of landing pages, um, the main reason we're doing these is to create, when people are searching inside Google for particular types of properties or particular niche searches, you're creating um, a solution for those searches. So for example, you know, the million to $2 million, you know, mid-century modern homes, um, those, even though it's not linked in here, that's still going to rank really well in Google. And people typing for that in Google were most likely to find this page towards the top, and it's going to have your listings built into it. But you can make them linked after this. All you got to do is drag and drop it, and you can create a, you know, add it to a section that's already there or create a new section uh, for the top navigation. But let me go ahead. So we're going to go into the not link and create, a, hit the plus. And I'm going to hit blank. And this is a blank page. We're starting from scratch. Okay. I've got some notes down here. This is the title that I wanted for this page. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to put it in. So let me delete that. 
I lost my, you know, I'm going to click blank page. Now when it comes up, we're going to have there. I'm going to now paste it. That's the name of the page. So this is what I want to call it. So now it's, it shows me a blank page, right, which is perfect. Now I'm going to go into edit mode. And remember, everybody, everything's being recorded. You guys can rewatch this later if I'm going too fast. I click the edit button. And now I'm going to click on the little bubble. And now the first thing here is text. I'm going to click on text. And in here, I'm going to put my cursor in there. I'm going to paste in the title that I just created, that I used for the name of the page. Um, and this is, you know, it's got the keywords in there. It's got mid-century modern. It's got Palm Springs. It's got pool. It's got $1 million to $2 million. All right. These are all search terms that I'm hoping um, some people may be looking for and that I want to rank really well for with this page. So I'm now going to go into and center this, use the little center icon in here. And then where it says normal, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to select H1, heading one. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and scroll down on the page a little bit and I'm going to save that. So the first piece of my page has been built and all it is is just a header. But now I want to be able to add in the video that goes in here. Okay, so, and you don't need to have a video. I'm just giving you guys examples. So I'm going to go edit and I'm going to click over the bubble again and I'm going to come out to you where it says video. And now I'm going to create a tab. I'm going to go to YouTube and I'm going to look for my video. So this is the one that I copied actually. So I'm actually just gonna copy that URL and I'm gonna come back into this page and I'm gonna put that where it says video URL and I'm gonna apply it and boom, that's how you get the video to appear. And again, most of you probably won't have a video for these landing pages, um, but you may want to do one or you may just wanna add more text and you can click on the bubble and you can just use text instead or you can add some images, it's totally up to you. But I just wanna give you guys some options. Um, How do you make the video smaller, Kiwi? Yeah, so to make the video smaller, what you would do instead is come into here where it says share on YouTube and go into um, embed, where it says the embed code. And you can come in and, um, you can copy this code here. Okay, oh, sorry, copy. And, that, and then what you would do instead is you would come back to this page. Now I'm gonna delete this video, delete that block, and I'm gonna roll over that again. And instead of using video, I'm gonna use what's called code block. Um, and this is the same thing if you wanna do like a Matterport um, embed or some sort of other embed, which is like an iframe, um, which I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more later as well. But the, whenever you've got code you wanna put into a page, you wanna use the code block. So we've got the embed code from YouTube. So I wanna embed that in here. So I wanna remove the hello world code, put this in, and, if you, and now you'll notice it's smaller. And you can change the, the height and the width in here to be whatever you want it to be. To, to get it to the right size and apply that. Um, and you know, just another silly little thing, but if you want this centered, you wanna put a tag around it called center, C-E-N-T-E-R, um, and you wanna have an opening tag, closing tag for center. This is real simple HTML there. And now your video in the middle is centered. So it's a bracket center and closing bracket center around that tag we applied. So now you've got the little video I'm going to save that. Um, and now what I want to do is I'm going to add in the actual search results for this search. Okay. Um, what I tend to use for this is um, I like to go into incognito mode and I, you need to go onto your search site. So for Brady, search, it's search.bradysandoval.com and you're going to go forward slash widgets. Okay. So once you've done that, you're going to come up with a weird looking page like this. Um, 
and you're going to want to come down to the bottom under where it says gallery configuration and you're going to do an, a um, configure gallery okay or edit search and this is where you're going to come in and put in all of your criteria for the for the search so i know for this particular property i'm, I'm looking for palm springs uh, palm springs i'm also going to put palm desert um, just because I know Palm Spring Desert's right next to Palm Springs, I'm just going to add that in there as well. Because I know you get houses a little bit cheaper out there, but people may, um, looking here, may also be interested in these ones. So now I'm going to come down, and you can see up the top here, it's telling you you get 17 results so far. And this is back in code that your clients won't see, that we've given you guys access to, so you can create your own search results and then create landing pages for them. So now I need to come in, do the price range. Um, I was playing around with this before, so it's already in there, that one million to two million. So you're gonna whatever your price range needs to be. Single family residences. So I've unchecked all the others. And now I'm gonna come down here under all amenities. I'm gonna select pools, because I need it, homes with pools. And also, you know, you've got tons of options here. You guys can go really, really niche and just create all sorts of search results and landing pages. Um, I'm calling it a squeeze page, but it's basically a landing page, a mouse trap, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then home style. I've got mid-century modern, okay? Because um, this MLS provides that because there's a ton of them in um, Palm Springs. So that is everything that I'm looking for in my results. Let me look up here. There's 17 properties. Now I'm gonna click on see listings and it's actually gonna show me what those results look like. And I'm like, cool, yep, that's it, I need these. So to get those, you're gonna copy this little piece of code here. And there's a, you just run over, where, cop, um, scroll over where it says copy and copy. And now um, I'm gonna go back to this page, okay? I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna go to edit because I need to be back in edit mode. Okay, cool. And now I need to find one of my little bubbles. There's the bubble. I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna go down to the code block, which is under more. And now, again, like we did with the video before, this is just another piece of code. Um, but this now it's the code for the search results. Remove that hello stuff. So I've got a blank slate there. And you're gonna paste in the code we just found. And I'm gonna apply that. And then I'm gonna come back up here and make sure I save it. And now what I want to do is I want to see what this page looks like. So I'm going to roll over here to where we created the page. I'm going to click on the little sundial. And now it's going to give me under general what's called a URL slug. And I'm going to copy that URL slug. And now I'm going to go back to the branded site for this client. So that's Brady, Sandoval. So go back to your branded slide, and then after the .com, go forward slash and paste in that URL slug. And then you're gonna, the page will appear. Boom, there's the page. Mid-Century Modern Palm Springs, that's the title we added, that's the video we added, and there's all the search results, okay? So that's, you know, in a nutshell, how to create a basic landing page. Um, here's an example of another one a client did, which I thought was really clever. This client is in Philadelphia. They did one for top 10 luxury home rise condo buildings in Philadelphia. And they went in and did the research and, and picked out the top 10 buildings. And then they put information on each building and then they added in the results for each building. Um, and again, by going to the search um, widgets page, which I showed you, you can find your buildings. You can find the actual results for each one. Embed that little piece of code there. <laughs> Whoops. Um, Anyway, so um, let me go back to that page. Let me go back to that page really quickly. So one other thing I thought they did was really cool. They also embedded some forms in these, like for this one, for example, um, submit a request to be notified when available. Um, and that way, you know, if there's really popular buildings in here and buildings that are low on inventory, but people may want to get alerted on that. Um, create forms for that and then put a tag on those forms so that you know um, once there's availability, you can reach out to these people. 
So now what I want to do is hand the reins over to June. Um, June is going to show you um, on this page we created how to actually create a button that will then launch a form so that people can reach out to you um, and to be able to perhaps do a virtual tour on any of these properties for you. Um, we've already showed you in the last webinar how you can create video tours for every property. Um, but I would say, you know, during this time, that would be a really cool call to action. You know, contact us to do a virtual tour on any of these properties. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna pass this over to June and let June sort of take over from here. All right, um, I hope you guys can see my screen. So I just did open up uh, what Kiwi just created and I'll be adding a button here that would open up a contact form. And uh, that contact form is, you know, a way for your customers or clients to um, reach out to you. So uh, I'm here on the back end, and I need to scroll down to that page that was just created. Uh, I just want to answer, by the way, one question earlier that was asked. Um, does it mean, oh, when you put a page under not link, does that mean that it will be hidden on Google as well? So let me answer that. Um, there's a separate um, option in here under SEO. And then there's actually a toggle in here that would allow you to hide that page from search results. So uh, here's an, an on, on and off button. So just go ahead and turn that on if you want to hide that on Google. All right. And um, yeah, let me go ahead and actually show you how to add that, that, um, that button. So I'm opening up that page on edit mode. There we go. I'll just wait for it to load. There we go. And I'm just gonna hover over the, the content and click on this edit button. Now this circular um, buttons in here on the left hand side is actually an indicator on where you would add the object that you're going to add. Uh, in this case, it's a button. So see that horizontal line there? So I wanna add it on top of that video. Not really a button, but it's actually a contact form that will transform or, or will convert it into a button. So under more here, there's actually a form. And when you click on that, it will give you this default contact form, which has this default fields, name, email, subject, and message. Now, the very first thing that you want to add here is a, um, is a field for a phone number. The reason why you want to add a phone number in here is because uh, the system uh, won't be able to really recognize uh, you know, this contact form as a lead or as a lead generation capture form if there's no phone number on it. So we need to add that. And uh, in order for you to do that is uh, you'll have this small window right here and just click on this add form field and then scroll down and then you'll see this phone. So just click on that and then it will add that form field right down there. And then you can just actually delete some of the other fields here like the message or subject. So now once you're done setting up the fields, now it is time for us to convert it into a button. Now under the advanced tab here, which is the third one, scroll down and you actually have here where it says light box mode. And just tick that and then um, you know, you'll see right away that it was converted into a button. And then let's say, uh, we want to say here, um, contact us for a virtual tour. So let me just go ahead and um, paste that here. And I want that to be on the middle. I guess it looks odd on the left hand side. There we go. And uh, hit on apply. And then scroll down a bit so that the save button would appear. And hit on save. But um, looking at it from my screen right now, it looks odd without a space. So let me go ahead and add a space here as well. So the same button, that circular gray button, and then add a spacer. And you know, as the name suggests, it adds space. And then again, scroll down and, and then hit on save button. Now let's take a look at that on the live preview mode here on the, or on the actual page. So there's the button. And when I click on it, this pop-up form would appear. Now it says your new form. Of course, we don't want people to see that. So let's go back here and edit this form. And this is what uh, what we saw earlier. So let's just say um, 
contact us. It could be anything, but yeah. So I'll just say contact us there, and I'm gonna save it. Yep, and then do a refresh here. And there we go. Now, uh, let me also explain like the importance of this contact form. So um, the way things happen from the back end, the moment a client sub clicks on the submit here, what will happen is it will go to our system, to our um, uh, what's that back end system, and then that lead will be then uh, sent to your CRM. And uh, of course, the necessary information will be there, like the name, email, and um, phone, and uh, so that you will be able to, to nurture that lead or contact it if needed. And um, yeah, basically that's it. Oh, Kiwi, you can yeah, continue oh. now. Okay. All right, thanks, John. I mean, uh, <laughs> June. Um, so the next thing, good, we're making good progress here. Next thing I wanna show you guys how to do um, is to create single property pages. So if you've got a particular property you want to put, um, you really want to promote, um, I'm going to show you how to do that. And there's two different ways of doing this. Um, one is a really down and dirty. It takes like, I would say less than 10 seconds. And the other one um, takes maybe a minute, but it gives you a lot more um, flexibility as far as doing edits, adding video tours, and all that other good stuff. So let me walk you through the two ways. Um, and, you know, some examples of single property pages, you know, you may want to do like coming soon properties and create a whole catalog for all your coming soon properties. You may want to do just solds, um, or you may want to do featured properties. So this particular client, um, I'm going to use uh, Brady Sandoval again, just because I think it's, uh, it's pure property porn, the stuff in um, Palm Springs. It's so pretty to look at. So let me share with you an example of a single property page. Um, Kiwi? Yeah. yeah. Kiwi Jr. here. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. I forgot something. Um, I see it here on the questions, how to add a tag. I forgot how to, to add Oh, that. yeah. Can what did you that again? go through that? Let me stop my sharing. Go through that real quick. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. I'm a bit nervous here, actually. <laughs> But yeah, um, here, I'm back on that page. I'll go ahead and show you guys how to add that custom tag so that uh, when, once it lands on your CRM, you'll know that it actually came from this page. Um, let me stop my video again here. John, okay. I think you're doing um, a good job just for what it's worth, man. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Barry. It means a lot. So um, yeah, I'm editing again the form here. So click on edit here and then I want to add a another form field, but this time I want to add a hidden tag. Now, as the name suggests, uh, it's actually a tag or a field that your customers won't see, but this is how you tell the system, um, this is a custom tag. This is what I want the lead to have. A, this is what, this is the tag that I want the lead to come with. And uh, let's go ahead and type in here, my local tags. Now this, uh, this um, text right here, this is constant. Uh, we really need to type in the local tags here. So uh, I'll, I'll let you guys take note of that because you know, this is something that can't be changed. If you, if you like miss the letter S here, I don't think it'll work. So please guys remember that while local tags. And then this is under default value here. I'm not sure if you guys can see the placeholder there, but it says default value. That is where you put in the custom tag. Let's say I want to name this tag um, a century. Oops, I don't want to put a space there, just to be safe. Mid-century tag. It could be anything really, but uh, it's. I just want to show you that it can be. You know, it's customizable. Now this tag will then be with the lead on the system, and you'll see it on your CRM. And just click on Apply there, and then then save again. And just to show you guys that that field that we just added is not going to appear. Uh, yeah, I'm doing a refresh here, clicking on the button. And as you can see, we don't see that field, but it's already included or encoded on the system. Can you That's open it. up the edit form again one more time? Because I think that this is actually a really big deal for users 
because you know we're if we're generating these landing pages to be able to edit it so you went to edit form is that right yes um all right on, let me step back here again so i'm on the page um, i'm hovering over the contents and clicking on edit here page content uh -huh. edit and then i'm gonna hover on that form button and then I'm gonna click on edit again. Now this small window would pop up where it says edit form. And then there's a button down here that says add form field. If I click that, it will give me all of these options and one of the option is the hidden tag that I just added. And once we add that um, hidden tag, now these are the information that we need to uh, fill in. First thing is while local tags. That's, um, that, that is how we tell the system, hey, this is a custom tag, so be ready for it, something like that. And then this is where you actually put in the custom tag that you thought of. And then don't okay, forget to helpful. apply, and then hit and save. Thank you. Let me, okay, cool. Back on track, single property pages. So there's two single, two separate ways. I'm gonna go through the, the down and dirty, the real fast and easy way right now. Um, and then I'm going to show you the sort of the full Monty, the how to do it with all the bells and whistles. Um, but this is the page we're going to be creating. Um, so again, you log into the back end of the site, um, and you're going to create a section with, um, it's basically called a listing. So I've already got one here called featured properties. Um, a lot of other clients I know I've already created these for their single property pages but you need to create what's called, I guess called the parent that you can put the children under. Um, so the parent would be just sold or the parent would be featured properties or um, coming soon. Um, and if you don't have that parent page in there already, or the parent um, category, you just hit the plus and you come down here to where it says listings under other, and then you give it the name. Okay. And that's going to give you the top level. And then you're going to create all the pages or the listings within that. But since I've already got that created in here, I'm just gonna click on it. Now it's gonna show me the collection or the children that live inside the parent. And, you know, I've already given you an example of the page and that's down here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete it and show you how to recreate it from scratch. <laughs> okay, so it's, there's two separate ways to recreate that page. One is, if you know the page's MLS number, which I've got it down here, I just copied it. I know what the MLS number is for the page I want to create. So if you want to create a real simple one, you can come to the bottom under the not linked section and go to where it says listing detail. Click on that and you're going to see a little form like this. It's going to ask for MLS number and it's going to ask for team member. Pick whoever on your team is associated with this listing and select them and click generate listing link. <laughs> Boom, that's how quick it is, okay? So this is fantastic, it's a beautiful looking page, all the information's in there, pulled from the MLS, and it's even got the agent assigned to the page. So the downside of this is you're not able to edit this. If you wanted to add a video tour into this page, um, you wanna add in a second agent to this page, or a virtual tour of this page, or things why we love it for this page, you can't do that, okay? Um, you're gonna need to do it the second way, which I'm gonna show you now. But if you just quickly wanna create a, a landing page for a property, and you don't have videos, you just need a killer page, um, you can use that tool, okay? But again, if you try and make changes to these pages, it's gonna make changes to every single page that you've used this tool for. So it's not ideal, you don't have a lot of flexibility, but it does allow you to do it really, really quickly. So the other way of creating that page um, is going into featured properties, okay? And I'm gonna hit the plus sign now and create the page from scratch using our um, single page sort of editor. And that is, you come under listings here, and I'm gonna put the MLS number there. Um, so Palm Springs, CA, um, I forget the name. Let me grab the, there it is there, the zip code. You don't always need the zip code. It does say optional, it does say optional here. But I find sometimes if you don't have these, it doesn't always pull in all the information. 
So I recommend you put all of those in. Um, and then I'm gonna show you separately in a minute how to add, or the reasons why we love it. Um, this is a cool little addition to the page. So I'm gonna add, and if you don't put anything in here, it just won't show up on the page. So I'm gonna put, um, you know, Entertainer's Delight, um, it's Airbnb, a Vacation Rental Dream, and maybe uh, Massive Airbnb Potential. I don't know, right? You can put whatever you want in there is the point. And now I'm gonna, oh, now the other thing I wanna do is the, under content, enter the listing title. So I actually want to um, take the property address and use that as the title. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here back to my notes and I'm gonna copy that. And I'm gonna paste, ah, didn't take it. Oh, damn it. There we go, there. Okay, paste that in there. So essentially I've got title of the property, I've got just the MLS number, the city state zip, and that's it. And then I'm gonna hit save and publish. Give that a second, and now it's actually created the page for me. How do I view that page, or how do I view these other pages? The way I like to do it is I go to the parent up here, which is the top level, click on the little sundial, and I see what is the URL slug for that, okay? I know it's forward slash featured. So now I'm gonna go to his branded site, and I'm gonna dot com, I'm gonna forward slash featured. And now it's gonna let me see all of these children pages that we've created, okay? And this is the new one that I just did. So if I click on that, it's gonna now show me the page that we just created. Here's the reasons why we love it. Here's the gallery. Awesome. Couple of things missing here. It doesn't have an agent assigned and there's no video. So I'm gonna show you how to add those now. I'm gonna close that. So I'm gonna go back into this page where it's got the feature top level, it's got all the properties, and this is the one I wanna make edits to. So I'm gonna click on it, and it's gonna show up here in my right-hand side of the page. And I'm gonna scroll down until <laughs> it lets me click on the page. Let me just click on that. Okay. So I'm just looking, oh, here we go, edit. So I wanna be able to make edits. So over here where it says virtual tour, I'm gonna to roll over these boxes. You notice when we looked at the page, it doesn't say virtual tour. It doesn't say any of that stuff, um, but it's available. Let me look at that. It's available here if you wanna add it in. So to be able to add it in, um, you kinda of click on the edit, and now you get the little regular box with the bubble, click on the bubble, and we're gonna go back to the more, and we're gonna add the code block again. Click on code. I'm gonna delete what's in that current little, the hello world piece. I'm gonna go back to my um, little, notepad here and I'm gonna copy my Matterport code. If you guys are using Matterport, if you're using Astraloom, they're gonna give you embed code that you can use, just like we pulled from YouTube before. Um, most of the time it's gonna say something like um, iframe and then a bunch of you know width and height and all that other crazy stuff. But take that, paste it into the display, and you're gonna see it actually show up on the page. Um, Again, I like these to be centered. So I do it, just add a little extra tag, which is um, open bracket, C-E-N-T-E-R, and then end bracket. And then what it does is it, it does another center right after it with a forward slash in front of it. You wanna cut that piece out. That needs to go at the end. So center, and I'm gonna put this, you know, for you guys, I'm gonna put this into the chat, just so if anyone wants to see what their code looks like, it's in the chat. And now I'm gonna apply. And you can see now that is centered. So I'm gonna hit save on that. Um, I'm gonna come back to 
Brady, fold slash featured. Whoops. Featured. I'm going to click on this property that we just created. Oh, I'm so in love with this house. It's so darn cool. Okay. And now let's have a look. There we go. There is our Matterport virtual tour. <laughs> you can play that. You can actually use all the features of the virtual tour. Um, it's got the gallery. So the only thing now that's missing from this page um, is the actual agent who's assigned to this page. Um, so let me show you how to add him in. So the very first thing you want to do um, is to go back up a level on your back end of your site and go to the team page. So where it, assign, where it has all of the members of your team or the agents on your team. And you're going to find the little two hamburger buns or two rectangular um, boxes. And that's where you want that team because that basically lets you know it's a parent page and there's going to be children underneath it. So the children will be all the agents, right? So here's this whole team. Awesome, beautiful looking headshots. Um, and now if we roll over the little sundial for Brady, who I want to assign to this page, it's going to pop up Brady's information. And he's, there's a tag here, Brady underscore Sandoval. If you haven't done this before, you're not going to have a tag. And what you're going to need to do is click on the plus and apply a tag and then save it so that it's got a tag like this. I've already applied this tag, so it's in here. But the very first thing you need to do is make sure your agents have a tag. So now you can associate that agent to your single property page. So now I know what his tag is, Brady underscore Sandoval. I'm going to cancel out of this. I'm going to come back to the featured property page that we're looking to add the agent to. Go into my featured property section, come down to the actual page. It's this topaz circle. Click on the gear icon and go to listings right here at the end. And now what we're going to do is scroll down to this underneath these two boxes. And if you, if you have a coming soon property, it's not on the MLS yet. The only difference is you won't have an MLS number. And you will need to upload all the photos in here yourself because we can't pull them from the MLS, but you can upload them in here and you can come in here and you can add in the beds, the bars, the square foot, the price. And then we'll use that information to populate the page with. Now, so it just takes a couple, like an extra minute or so to add that information. Um, but it's totally available for you if you need to do that. Um, but we want to tag under here where it says agent subdomains or add agent team member tag. So this is what we're adding in here. And this happens to be the tag here because I've already done this before, Brady underscore Sandoval. If you misspell it or if you don't do the underscore, it's not exactly the same as on the page. It won't, um, it won't grab. It won't know to connect the two. So I'm going to hit save on that. I'm going to come back to the page. I'm going to refresh this page. Um, and in a second here, there we go. Everything's refreshing. Now Brady's showing up and he is the agent. Um, so that is in a nutshell, how to create single property pages, two separate ways, um, how to add virtual tours, um, how to tag the agent. Um, but I highly recommend you guys, you know, create these, especially if you've got virtual tours. I've seen a lot of clients doing some really cool ones. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool, right? <laughs> let me know, uh, let me stop sharing my screen. Um, any questions, Barry or team on that before we hand it over to June and he's gonna go over the final piece, which will be um, single agent pages. Yeah, Key, we have a couple, this is Kelly, we have a couple people asking how you can move uh, the listings in between collections. So say you had it in coming soon and then it went to sold. You wanna show that? All right, so um, just open up the collections or the listing page that you created. Uh, for this example, it's just the all communities. And let's say you wanna move this specific listing to a, a different collection or a different section. Just go ahead and select it. When you have it selected, just three buttons would appear and just click on move and then this small window would pop up and just select the section that you want to move it to 
And once you do that, that's hit on move item and that will actually do it. Got it. Okay. Thanks, Jim. All right. Let me go ahead and show you how to add additional contents on your profile page, just like what Judy did here, uh, on her page here. So let me just go over real quick here uh, what she currently has on her page. So she has like a greeting section in here and then another greeting, uh, another section where she has her bio and a video. And then towards the end of the page here, she also has a gallery. Now let me go ahead and show you how you can add those objects on your profile page. Now this is the page that we're, we're going to be working on. So I created a test page here, which is um, almost empty. So it just has um, listings here and this community blocks, which um, I recorded another video on how to add this, by the way, so you can watch that as well. And um, yeah, other than that, it's pretty much empty. So let me go ahead and show you how to add on additional contents there. Now, um, oh, first I wanna copy this. So I wanna create a greeting section. So in order for you to do that, of course you need to be logged in to the back end of your site. Click on pages and then click on team. Now click on the team collections link here, which has this icon, the two rectangular boxes. If you click that, it will give you the list of agents that you have. And then just hover over the thumbnail that you want to edit and click on the settings button. And then under the content tab here, this is where you will put that greeting. So let's say greetings from June here. I want that to be big, so I'm going to switch it to heading one. I want that to be on the middle. And I also want to add social media links. So I'm clicking on this gray circular button. And then under social links here, or social box, you have social links. Now this smaller window would appear. And I already, I already added three test links here from Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. But you can actually add more by clicking or clicking and then typing the URL or pasting the URL here on this text box. And it will automatically detect what kind of link that is. It could be from Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, or any other social media platform. And then the icon would be automatically added. And once you're done with the list, click on apply, and then this is what you'll have. And then I'm gonna go ahead and save that and then switch back here there. Switch back here and see what it will look like. There we go. Now uh, let's go ahead and see how we can add the bio and the video. Now this time I want to open up the page itself on edit mode. So I'm clicking on, uh, I'm on the team page right now and then I'm going to click on the, the link going to my page so that it's it will open up, open it up. And then I'm going to scroll down to this section right here where it says custom content. So I'm going to click on edit and automatically or by default it will have a text box here but I want to add first the video so I'm going to click on that circular button clicking on video and then grabbing my link here for the video and then pasting it on here then hitting on apply. So once I have that there I'll go ahead and um, add a text box. You can add one more or you can use the other one, the default um, text box that has been added when you click on edit. And then in here I'll just add some test text. And once I have that added, I can actually move things around from here. So when I move that to the left hand side of the video. I uh, just want to make sure that you saw how I did that. So I, just, I needed to hover over the object and see that the mouse cursor changes from a cursor to a hand. Once that happens that means you can actually click and drag an object and move it around. So let me do that again. So I'm clicking it from the left hand corner of the video here so that it will be easier for me to put it or position it on the right side of the text. Let me just scroll down to that text here. See that? So there. 
And it's kind of tricky at first, but you'll get the hang of it. And I'm just going to delete this extra text box. And scroll down a bit so that the save button would appear. And click on save. Now on Judith's page, she has a gallery there. So let me go ahead and add one here as well. So we have another custom content section here. Hitting on edit. And clicking on this circular button. And under gallery, I can choose four one of these four layouts. I'm going to choose carousel and then upload images. And I just need to wait for that um, to upload. While that is uploading, you can actually switch tabs here under custom design. You can switch to another layout. If you want to automatically transition the slides, just hit on this button. And depending on the layout that you choose, the settings here might change. So just you know, feel free to play around with it. And once you're done, click on Apply. And you'll see that I have the gallery in here. It looks pixelated because I chose a smaller um, Im image file so that it will upload fast for this video. But of course, you can definitely upload high-resolution images on here. Now, um, another way of having a gallery on your profile page is actually adding an Instagram feed, which is actually useful because an Instagram feed could be a video and sometimes, uh, I'm sorry, usually it is an image and sometimes it could be a video. And let me go ahead and show you how to add a, an Instagram feed here. So clicking on that, that circular button again, and under social blocks, you have Instagram. If I click on Instagram, this small window would appear. I need to select a connected account on this branded site. Right now, I don't have any account connected to it, so I'll click on this drop down and then click on add account. Once I click that, just hit on OK here, and then another window would pop up asking me to log in my Instagram. So I just need to provide my username and password, authorize this connection, and the feed should go live here once you save that. Uh, it gave me an error message because I didn't specify any account, but feel free to complete the steps from there. It's pretty straightforward. And again, don't forget to save or click on that save button. Uh, let's go ahead and refresh this page to see how all of those look like. Uh, again, I have the greeting message there. I have the verbiage in here, the video. And then down at the bottom, I have the gallery. And there you have it. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and um, show Judy's um, profile page here. So uh, this is a good example because she added a lot of custom items or custom objects on here. Like she has a, a bit of a banner in here with social media links, um, some verbiage, and a video. And then towards the end, she also has like a gallery or a carousel down here. Um, for the for the community blocks, um, the link, uh, we created actually a, a separate video for this and a link of that video will be provided by Kiwi later. And uh, so let me go ahead and show you how to add, uh, you know, um, the item in here. So I have here a sample um, profile page. Um, I created mine just for an example. Let me go ahead and refresh this. Just wanna show you how empty it is. Okay, so it's basically just my headshot there, basic information and my list. And uh, yeah, I have this community blocks. Again, the video for this community blocks, uh, we have that pre-recorded on a link, uh, which will be provided later on. Well, let me go ahead and show you how to add more contents on here. So of course, you wanna be on the edit mode of your site, and then click on pages here and scroll down to the team collection page. Um, by default, you might have two team pages or two team um, items down here. Just look for the team with this icon right here. Uh, it has two rectangular boxes. And when you click that, the team members that you have on your branded site. And then go ahead and click the thumbnail of that specific agent and uh, actually don't click it, just hover over it and then click on the settings button. And then whatever we type here under content, 
let me go ahead and show you. Uh, I'm gonna add a thing. Things from June. And uh, let's say I wanted that to be big and I want that to be on the middle. And let's say I want to add, um, by now you should be familiar with this, this circular button. So I'm going to click that and then let's say I want to add social media links. So under social blocks here, I have here social links. Now this small window would pop up. Uh, I already added some test links here but you can actually add more just type in the the url of your profile it could be you know instagram twitter facebook could even be a google uh, page just put in the links here and it will give um, the icon for it then just hit and apply and then there you go have it let me go ahead and save this so that you'll see what it will look like on the page itself so i'm gonna switch back here and then Gonna do refresh, and that is where it will appear. Greetings from June. Now, um, let me go ahead and show you how to add more content, like um, this one right here. So Judy has like a verbiage on the left side, and then a video on the right side. It's actually on a different section. So let me go ahead. How? Uh, let me go ahead and show you how you would access that. Earlier, we opened up config of the team member. This time I'm actually going to open up the profile page on edit mode. All right, now once I have this open, I'll uh, just wait for it to load. It will have this sections with, with red broken lines, but actually indications that you can actually put a custom content there. And actually when you hover over it, it will have that label custom content. And uh, let's say I want to add it right below that greetings that I created. So um, by default, a text box would already would already be here. So you can already you know you can go ahead and add text there. So let me go ahead and um, add some test text here, which is not working. Hold on. Sometimes. Uh, if there's a, a special character on the text that you're trying to paste, it, will, it won't actually allow you to do it. So just make sure it, won't, it doesn't have that special character. Earlier it has double codes. I'm not sure why Squarespace is not accepting that. So I just removed that double code and there we go. I, I was able to paste it. And let's say I also wanna add a video on here. So just like on the single property page that um, Kiwi showed us earlier, uh, uh, actually the same idea just have the video URL ready so I have a video URL here I want to use there so this is actually the video of the code block I mean the community block and uh, let me go ahead and apply that now um, in order for us to have it you know side by side we need to hover over that object and wait for the mouse cursor to change into this hand cursor. Now, if you have that, just click and drag it over to the right side or to, you know, to whatever uh, place or layout you want to put it to. Oops, didn't. Let me try that again. Sometimes it's a bit tricky. Even us, um, you know, does this every day. Uh, it's a bit tricky sometimes, but <laughs> you'll get the hang of it. Um, huh? It's not allowing me to do it. But yeah, basically that's the idea of it. Uh, this 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 hand right here would actually allow you, should allow you to move objects. Let me try it with, with the spacer. There we go. So let me add it below that spacer. There, and then I'm gonna delete that spacer. There we go. See, uh, so that's a one workaround. And then uh, I need to scroll down so that the save button would appear and I'm gonna hit on save. Now let's go back here and see what that will look like. So now it's a bit, uh, we're 
backward a bit closer to how um, Judy set up her page. Now let me go ahead and show you how to set up a gallery or a carousel here. So I'm gonna scroll down further. Where, uh, we have another custom content here, there we go. So I'm gonna click on edit. And then I'm gonna click on that oval button. And this time I wanna choose one of the items under gallery. And here we have a slideshow, carousel, a grid, and stack. Uh, I'm gonna hit on gallery. And I want to add these images that I pre-selected earlier. And you can upload multiple images in one go. And then while that is uploading, we can actually uh, tweak the, some items in here, like how many items should appear on one row, things like that. Just play around with it. And um, let's see, I'm just waiting for it to, to, to upload. There we go. Now, uh, one other thing that you can add on here uh, instead of a gallery, because a gallery, uh, like this specific gallery right here is a static gallery, meaning you really have to step in and, and update the images if you want that change. But we can actually set up an Instagram feed on here. So let me go ahead and hit an apply here. And then clicking on that oval button again, this time I wanna click on Instagram. It's so under social blocks. Earlier we added we added social links. This time I want to add Instagram. Instagram here is actually a, an Instagram feed where uh, it will display like a, it looks kind of looks like this. It's on grid view, but instead of this, of course, this images it will display the contents of your Instagram account. And default, it won't uh, your uh, brand site won't have Instagram connected to it. But what what you can do is once this small window pop up just hit on this drop down and then click on add account. And then, um, there we go. A, a, a pop-up window would appear uh, asking for your logins. And then of course, just log in, provide your username and password. And once that is connected, once your Instagram authorized your Squarespace website to connect, then it will show your Instagram feed here. And all you have to do next is just hit on apply here. And then, of course, it will give me an error because I didn't connect an account. And then, of course, scroll down and then hit on save. And that should look uh, that should allow you to have like a similar page, same as uh, Judy here. That's it. Um, any questions? Uh, Kiwi, I have a question about this Instagram concept. Um, I see where Judy's using it, just kind of like a get to know me. Are there any other ways you've seen someone use their Instagram account on a branded site or any ideas for those watching that don't have, you know, an Instagram account attached to their branded site, maybe some different, you know, get to know us or I, I don't know if you have any ideas about different ways people could use that feature. Um, yeah, let me share my screen. Um, there's one other client I know who's actually using it. This is PLG Estates, a big sort of indie broker out of Los Angeles. So they've got, you know, their Instagram onto their, on their front page, and it just scrolls through like this, shows like the top, uh, you know, the last four um, Instagram posts. So, but there's, there's multiple different ways. And I suggest people just, you know, they, they play around with that. They add in different things, see what it looks like. You know, if you've got really strong Instagram, then use it. If you don't, then I would just use a gallery and just highlight, you know, uh, Judy's got amazing Instagram, um, but she's actually not even using it on her main page. She's just using a, a gallery. So it's totally optional. 